Okay, so today we are going to be doing our age sex pyramid notes. Um, I'm going to make these shorter than the last ones. I know those were a bit lengthy. Um, so this is part two of your human population growth notes. So we'll start by talking about what an age sex pyramid actually is. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, it's used to show the proportion of the population at each age level. And then we can also, um, all these pyramids are all always uh, broken up into your two sides, uh, one side for males and one side for females. Um, real quick, let me kind of point out how it's laid out. Um, so you always have zero in the middle here. And then you have your population usually in millions going off to the left and the right. And here we can see males are just on the left, females are on the right. And over here, uh, your measurement, you have uh, age groups. And we break these age groups up into um, groups of years that are called cohorts. So for instance, here your bottom bar would be um, anybody who's age 0 to 4, and then 5 to 9, 10 to 14. So they're pretty simple to read, and you guys are actually going to be constructing some later. Just make sure you know that we stem from the middle here at 0, and we work our way out. Um, to the sides for uh, both sexes. So over here you have um, a little bit less than 300 million males in the 0 to 4 age range and then over here you have only about 250 million females in the 0 to 4 age range. Okay. Um, now a lot of times we also break up your uh, those age cohorts we're talking about into three different categories. Um, we have the pre-reproductive age category, which they say is usually around 0 to 14, even though we know that you can sometimes have babies before that. Uh, reproductive age bracket, they put f uh, 15 to 44, and then post-reproductive is 45 and up. And again, there are instances where people are still having babies at that point, but these are the three groups they put them into, and a lot of times they even color code them. So your pre-reproductive is at the bottom, reproductive age in the middle, post-reproductive at the top. And again, it's males on one side, females on the other. Okay, so what's the point of doing these? Um, you know, what, what information do they tell us? So it's really, really important for demographers, people who study population growth in different countries, um, to study these. They can look at potential for future growth. Um, they can look at specific age groups. They can look at specific genders, because we will talk about issues that are happening with um, different numbers of genders in certain countries that are probably going to cause them some population growth issues in the future. Um, you can look at just basically just look at the overall shape and we'll be getting into that here in a few minutes. Uh, some just general shapes will tell you what the general population growth is and what potential growth for that country could be. Um, and then also when we're looking at these um, pyramids, not only can we look at the growth, but we can also um, look at possible social conditions uh, that may come about in the future due to some growth issues that we're currently having. And so, actually before we go to the next slide, I'll, I'll talk about a couple of social issues, social conditions that are affecting our country. Um, two that come to mind are baby boomers and social security. So I'm sure most of you guys have heard of baby boomers. Um, baby boomers, um, are babies who were born after the end of World War II uh, from like the late 1940s into the 1960s. Huge boom in U.S. population growth. Um, and then we actually experienced what we call a little echo baby boom from the 1980s um, into like 2000, 2001. Um, these are the children of baby boomers that are having babies. So they, they had a slight little boom during that time, but definitely not as big as what we had during the baby boom era. So anyways, what's going on with these baby boomers, and I'll show you a picture of this later on in the notes, is that um, they are now all reaching age of retirement. And they're getting ready to stop working, and they're getting ready to start collecting Social Security. So Social Security is something that you hear a lot of politicians stressing out about. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of background with Social Security. That's the money that you're able to, you put, you, you pay, when you pay taxes, you pay a certain amount that goes into Social Security so that when you do reach retirement, you actually uh, get a Social Security check each month um, as a means of, of retirement to help you after you're no longer working. And it's government sponsored. So when Social Security began back in 1935, there were 44 workers 
paying tax for every retiree collecting from the program. So you had way more workers. You had 44 workers to one person who was actually retired. So you had a lot more people working than people who were actually collecting. Now they say the ratio is three workers for every one person collecting Social Security. And soon there are going to be more retirees than workers due to our population structure in our country. We have a ton of these baby boomers who are getting ready to leave the workplace and they're going to retire. Uh, it's predicted that in 35 years the system will go bankrupt and we wonder what's going to happen with Social Security. Will there be any Social Security for our age group when we retire? Uh, for our kids, for our grandkids, what's going to happen? So that's a good example of a social condition. Okay, here are three different shapes of population growth pyramids and we're going to talk more about this in detail uh, but here's the US we are a slight triangle here's Congo in Africa they have what we call a steep sided triangle and then Germany is what we would actually call like a top heavy or a concave pyramid um, it's going to designate a totally different type of growth than, than these other two countries So we're talking about social conditions that you would maybe want to study a uh, population growth pyramid to, to understand. Here are some questions that you might want to be able to answer. Um, we're not necessarily going to answer these right now, but we're going to come back and talk about these in our next set of notes. Uh, but you can start to think about these because they are good questions. And again, these are things that, um, that we can use population growth pyramids to help us figure out. So it says, why would a country's leaders want to know the proportion of the population in different age groups? Um, again, maybe they want to know what sort of services they should be providing, where the tax money should be going. Uh, what difference does the age of people in a country make anyways? Um, again, it kind of goes back to what we just talked about. Where should the money be going? Where should the funding be going? What sort of services should we be offering? Um, we watched the video about the um, people in Japan, how they're, they're aging and now they need to find better health care for the elderly. Or if you had a, a country where most of the population is pre-reproductive age, you would need to be focusing on um, child care and education for young people. Uh, what kinds of products do young people use? What about older people? So again, these are all things you'd want to think about. Uh, is it important for a government leader or planner to know the age of the population they are serving? Yes, um, and not to mention even just the whatever age group you have, um, that, would, that would be good to know for for elections, for voting purposes. These are all things that um, demographers would want to know and study. Okay, so in our next set of notes, we're going to talk about more more about fertility. Um, this is going to be a little bit of an intro into that. So we're going to talk about rapid population growth in a second um, and what causes that. Why would people want to have large families which would spur uh, rapid population growth in the first place? Um, you might ask, if, if population growth is such a huge issue on this planet, why would people want to have huge families with lots of children? Well, there are many reasons and it all depends on your country and uh, the economic state of where you live. So. In many countries, they still have what we call high infant mortality, which means uh, that a lot of your children do not survive past infancy or childhood, due mostly to diseases, uh, poor medical care, poor technology. Um, also, you'd want to have a lot of children for security in old age. Um, some countries do not have a built-in retirement or a pension program, so when they become too old to work, they have to have somebody ta to take care of them, and they're going to rely on their children to do that. So they want to make sure they have a large family. Um, children are an economic asset in ag agricultural societies. So especially for families that live far away from the city, if you live out in the countryside and you still uh, participate in agriculture as your livelihood, you want a nice big family to be able to help you um, with your crops. Status of women, so again we watched a video about this, it's a social status oftentimes depends on your, the number of children that they have, especially boys. If a woman can produce a, a lot of children and a lot of sons, she's going to have really high social status. Um, and then again, sometimes women do not want to have children, um, but there's just the unavailability of contraception or just they lack the knowledge. They don't have the education about types of birth control and where they can get it and, and how it could help them. Okay, ways to reduce family size is to provide education to women and entire families, uh, improve the health, 
and again, this would lower infant mortality rates, which would not make women want to have so many children if, if their babies they're already having weren't dying. So improving hygiene, uh, improving medical technologies, uh, providing contraception to people who would like to use them, uh, increase the family's income, again, which would make it so that parents wouldn't have to rely on their children for help and services and a, a retirement system, um, and then just improve general uh, resource management. Okay, this is a very, very, very important couple of slides. We're going to look at different types of age sex pyramids, different shapes. So this one is what we would call um, a triangular shape. You can see why it's called a triangular shape. And it's a very steep-sided triangular shape. So this is indicative of rapid growth, okay? Um, we have a lot of sub-Saharan Africa countries that exhibit this rapid growth. Um, these this type of pyramid is going to be indicative of a country that has really high birth rates. We can see you've got a really wide bottom down here, a really wide base. Um, but we can see it narrows off. So what this is telling us is that even though you have a really high birth rate, not a whole lot of these individuals actually survive into reproductive years, and then not very many at all survive into post-reproductive years. Um, so really steep slopes, really high birth rates down here at the bottom. Um, and then again, you'd have injury or you'd have death rates due to uh, injuries, starvation, disease, which would cause it to have this really steep slope. So that's rapid growth. Um, so we move over here. Here's us. We are still in what's considered slow growth. Now, as long as you have a triangular shape, it's still indicating growth. It's still indi indicating that the population is growing, but we definitely have much narrower sides here. We don't have those really, really steep sides, or I guess we could say we have a shallower triangle. Um, but again, we still have a broader base, narrower top. This is still showing growth, just slow growth. Okay, zero growth. We have countries like Spain, Austria, and Greece. Um, they basically show nice flat sides, okay? So zero growth, and we'll look at the demographic transition model in our next set of notes. It's going to show us how certain countries achieve zero growth. You would achieve zero growth when you have lowered your birth rates and your death rates to basically the same amount, and so you don't experience any growth. So, so their birth rates and their death rates are going to be pretty on cue. And you can see that they're, for each of these cohorts, the pre-reproductive, reproductive, Post-reproductive start to taper off a little bit, but these two groups are very similar. Okay, so that's zero growth. And then uh, some countries are actually experiencing negative growth. This is where you see this top-heavy age sex pyramid. Most of your population is up here in post-reproductive age. Okay, um, you do not have very high birth rates. Look at the birth rates. Very, very low. Okay, so what these countries are experiencing, that these countries are actually starting to stress out a little bit because they have all these young people that are going to be supporting um, this elderly population. And some countries have actually started to um, offer incentives to get uh, reproductive age women to have more children so that they don't experience this negative population growth because that would have economic consequences as well. Um, let me see if I want to go back. Well, the only other thing I wanted to point out that I noticed um, as I was talking is if you look over here at um, our country, the males and the females, look at the um, lopsidedness of these, okay? Because females have a much higher life expectancy uh, than males, okay? And that's just a biological thing, and you'll notice that here too, females, males. So all these poor lonely females at the top with no males left, very few. Males have a nice ratio at that point of their life. Okay, so one last thing on uh, on uh, older populations or graying populations. So we would, we'd say a population is graying when a large segment of the population is in that post-reproductive age group. Uh, what problems would this cause? Um, so I mentioned voting earlier. So, so you'd actually have a large voter base for elderly. Um, all the elderly people, obviously, they can vote. They're going to vote for things that affect them. Um, so that's going to be, or that's in the best interest of the elderly. So that's going to affect younger population because they're going to be looking out for themselves, which is understandable. So again, that's something that you'd want to study and look at. Uh, large number of old people in jobs means less for young people. 
especially with the economy the way it's been and with pensions and retirements not paying the way that they should, uh, a lot of elderly people are reluctant to retire. So they're holding on to those jobs and that means it's less jobs for the young people who are entering the workplace. And then we've already mentioned uh, the social security issue. Will it go bankrupt? Will it be around for, for our generation? Um, oh, and then here we go. Countries like uh, Germany, Denmark, Hungary, they're actually offering incentives to women to encourage them to have more children. So they do not experience this negative growth. Okay, and then one more time, here's, again, what a, a steep-sided, triangular, developing age sex pyramid would look like. Again, these countries would have um, really high birth rates down here at the bottom, low life expectancies, um, and you're going to have this really, really quick growth because we are getting a little bit better with our health care and our technology, which is helping to reduce infant and child mortality. Um, and when that happens, you're going to have really, really, really quick population growth because you're bringing the birth rate down, but you haven't yet been able, or sorry, you're bringing the death rate down, and we're working on bringing um, the birth rate down as well. Um, so when you have a low death rate, but you still have a high birth rate, that causes really high population growth. Okay, and then here is a, a, an example of a developed country age sex pyramid in relation to that. You have, again, more of a rectangular shape. Uh, this, is, this one isn't really concave. It's more of just a rectangular kind of flat-sided shape. And notice we have low birth rates. Okay, here's a slide of several different age sex pyramids for different countries. Uh, these are a little bit old, but just a couple of interesting things to point out. Um, they say right here in the middle... Again, these are a little bit old, but they say right here in the middle is where you can see uh, the baby boomers kind of coming up through the pyramid. Uh, I think they call it like the snake swallowing its prey because you can actually see it kind of moving up the pyramid as it goes from the bottom all the way to the top. Um, let's see what else interesting stuff do we have here. They say China's got kind of a weird shape um, where it's really broad out here or it's really wide here, but then all of a sudden it kind of cut in, and they say that that's due to the one-child policy, which we'll also talk about um, in our next set of notes. And I think that's really about all I wanted to point out on that one. Oh, and then India and Mexico, you can see these are both very steep-sided pyramids, so these would show very rapid growth. And then this last slide is showing us the baby boomers, how they have moved up through the ranks throughout the years. So here's them starting off back in the 50s. Here's where they were um, in the 80s, in their 20s, and in their 30s. Uh, 2015, that's where we're right around now. So we can see they're reaching the, those old ages, uh, getting ready to retire. So, and again, we can see that this big fat section is climbing to the top. And then in 2035, they say that they're, we're going to have them up here in their 70s and their 80s. And look at how this pyramid has changed. Now it's more of a straight-sided pyramid. So we've got all of these young people supporting this huge group of elderly. So we'll see what happens with the baby boomers. Okay, and that is it for our notes for today.